Welcome to All Villa, No Filler. Please subscribe to the show. Follow us on Spotify, Apple, YouTube, and wherever you get your podcasts. Aston Villa have completed the signing of Australian goalkeeper Joe Gauci from Adelaide United. The fee for the 23-year-old was reported to be just over £1 million. Today, I'm joined by Alex Conrad, all the way from down under in Sydney, Australia. He's host of the Fox Football Podcast. And also, would you believe it, he supports the mighty Aston Villa himself. Welcome to the show, Alex. Thank you very much for having me. Absolutely, no problems. Um, well, look, Joe Goucher, he's not a very well-known figure in uh, the UK, but uh, in Australian football circles, I'd imagine he's caught the eye a bit. So uh, what are your thoughts on uh, Goucher heading to Aston Villa? It's uh, it's definitely a, it was a bit of a surprise when I sort of first saw that link. I think it was Sky Sports who sort of first broke the news and, I think Gauchi was heavily tipped to be the next sort of Aussie goalkeeper to to go overseas and play his trade there. Um, funnily enough, it was a it was another Adelaide goalkeeper um, who who departed for the Premier League before he did. It was Stephen Hall. He's gone to Brighton, but Gauchi was their number one goalkeeper, and uh, he, he's sort of the next in the in a long line of Aussie goalkeepers to go overseas from the A League. We've had Matt Ryan, who's a soccer who's skipper, and he's our number one choice at the minute. He left. Uh, from the Central Coast Mariners, went to Belgium and then ended up at Brighton. He was there number one for a little while. Tom Glover left at the end of last season from Melbourne City to, to Middlesbrough in the championship. And uh, he even put in a great display against Aston Villa in the in the FA Cup. So Gauchi is the next one to go. Um, it's it's definitely a deserved move. He's only 23. And I guess in goalkeeper terms, that's that's quite young. Um, but he's, he's a tremendous shot stopper. He's, the soccer is number two at the minute. Um, he's enjoyed a rapid rise. Like he only made his debut for Adelaide a couple of years ago and it's been a meteoric rise for him. Um, he was let go by two clubs beforehand and ended up back at his hometown club of Adelaide. And it's, uh, it's definitely a deserved move for him. Yeah, I mean, obviously the, the leap to the Premier League is absolutely enormous. But as you say, there have been plenty of Australian keepers who've come here and excelled, not least of all, Mark Bosnich himself, a legendary Aston Villa keeper. Um, but, you know, do you see Gouch as a player who uh, has the attributes to succeed in the Premier League? I think I think so. He's he's first of all he's a superb shot stopper, which is I guess the the foremost, you know, the most important quality for a goalkeeper. Mm. Um, he's also you know one point nine four meters tall, so he's a very imposing figure that's going to be able to uh, claim plenty of crosses, which you know in England is going to be a vital part. We saw you know the likes of David de Gea really struggle with that when he first joined at Man United. So mm. the fact that gauchi has got that imposing figure um, is very very important for him. I think it might need a bit of time to sort of get used to the physicality of you know, English football because it's a it is a rough adjustment. Mm. Um, but I think you know learning from Emmy Martinez is going to be a massive help for him with that. Um, but I think he's he's definitely got all the qualities. I'll be intrigued to see how he copes with um, playing as a goalkeeper in Unai Emery system where he mm. likes that really high line and how how will how will Gauchi go as being a sweeper? He hasn't really had to do that much of a sort of a role as that sweeper keeper for Adelaide. So. That'll be a, a big sort of talking point. And I think some Villa fans might be a little bit too quick to judge if he struggles with that when he first starts. But um, I think he's definitely got the qualities to, to be a good good shot stopper for the Villa. Mm, yeah, it, it's definitely, um, it's a big adaptation, isn't it, for player, for goalkeepers who tend to stick to their line a bit more and get rid of the ball as fast as they can when they come to a, a play for a manager like Unai Emery who wants their goalkeeper to be very good on the ball. I mean, is that kind of something he's ever done um, with uh, Adelaide? Do they, do they play like that at all? They haven't really had to do, they're not really too much of a, you know, keep keep the ball, knock it around a little bit. They're a... It's sort of hard to pin down exactly what team they are, and I think that's the a case for a lot of Australian teams. It's a and that's a debate for <laughs> another another day in terms of the tactical styles of Australian football. Um, so it's not really something that we do see you know, often in the A League as much. I mean, when Ash Postecoglou was in uh, when he was managing Brisbane, that was sort of a, a hallmark of you know the passing out from the back. Um, it's something we don't, yeah we don't really see as much now. Um, See, so yeah, I can't really say how comfortable and confident Gauchi will be with that. But um, yeah, time will tell. Mm. And uh, has he really stuck out in the A-League? Is he, is he, you know, how has he done at Adelaide United, would you say, during his time time there? He's been superb. I think uh, I'm struggling to think of goalkeepers who have been better than him in the A-League. Uh, for someone who, who's who been so young and and to, to really rise to the top of the A-League at such a young age and so quickly uh, is, is something that I guess we do... We, we sort of have seen with Australian goalkeepers in the A-League, but 
uh, I think with Gauchi now, it's 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 crazy just how how many times he saved Adelaide with one on one saves. He's rem- he's got a remarkable record at penalties. I can't remember off the top of my head, but he's like it's definitely it's not fifty percent, but it's not quite it's quite close to that. So he's um he, he's definitely a, a vital presence for Adelaide in, in keeping them in games with massive saves. Um, so yeah, I, I, he's been a he's been a great. He's been a great custodian, well, not really custodian of the A-League. He's only been here for a little while, but um, he's he's been a, a massive presence in the A-League and, and really raising the profile of goalkeepers. And you'll see there's there's plenty of people wishing him well in, in Australia and sort of expecting that he was going to be the next one to, to make that move overseas. Right. And obviously he's going to be coming in to play alongside, or um, yeah, well, train alongside at least, uh, Emmy Martinez, uh, world's best goalkeeper, officially. Um, incredible keeper. Uh, do you think that he could ever push for the number one spot at Aston Villa or is it, he's a backup keeper basically? As long as Emmy's there, I will say that I think Joe's going to be the backup or barring a complete capitulation from Emmy Martinez, which I don't see ever happening. No. Um, I, I was actually a little bit surprised that Gauchi is going to join after the Asian cup with the Socceroos. I did think that he was going to go back to loan, uh, back on loan to Adelaide rather. Um, and that Olsen would sort of stay as that second goalkeeper. But having these three together is, um, I think it's going to be one of the best trios of goalkeepers in the entire Premier League. Um, he's a very, very good third-choice goalkeeper. Where It will be interesting to see if he overtakes Olsen for that second goalkeeper spot. Um, mm. I think a lot of Villa fans can sort of say that once Olsen's in between the sticks, it's a little can be a little bit unsettling. Um, okay. So it'll be intriguing to see whether Gauchi overtakes him in that front and if he gets any time in you know, whether depending on how long Villa can stay in the FA Cup for or if there's any Europa Conference League games that he sticks around um, or that he can make an appearance in although I think it'll be Emmy who probably starts those games considering it's the knockout stages um, so I do I don't think he'll be the number one at least for a little while but um, there's been sort of I, I think there was a little bit of talk that he might go out on loan next season um, I think there's also a bit of a mystery in terms of when Robin Olsen's contract actually even ends. Mm. So I think next summer will be an interesting one to see what happens. I think if Olsen gets sold, Gauchi would likely be the backup goalkeeper or if Olsen ends up staying in his contract is for a little bit longer, Gauchi might go out on loan to a championship club. So I think either way it'll be Emmy as the number one. Yeah, um, I think that was always the case at Villa. I think that if you were to look at weak spots in the squad, you'd say once Emmy Martinez would be out of the team with an injury or something. The backup keeper situation was always felt a bit rocky. So I'm intrigued to see how Gauchi slots in there, whether he becomes the established number two. Um, you know, does he uh, start for Australia, the national team at all? Has he, has he featured at all for the Aussies? He's made a couple of appearances. At the minute, he's our backup goalkeeper behind Matt Ryan. Um, mm-hmm. Matt Ryan's the captain. It's it's very, very difficult to, to unseat him at the minute. Um, but Gauchi, as it stands, is the next cab off the rank and it's a thoroughly deserved um, promotion. Uh, he's he's a wonderful goalkeeper and I think a lot of people definitely will view him as Australia's number one for for a long time after Matty Ryan hangs up the gloves. Okay. Um, well, obviously, we've established you're an Aston Villa fan. You're wearing a, a Villa shirt. Um, well, firstly, I, I mean, I've got to ask you, how, how did you end up a Villa fan? <laughs> it's um it's always an interesting question that I always get because I think in Australia a lot of people are like, you know, supporting the big six teams and then I come along and everyone's like how on earth are you an Aston Villa fan <laughs> the exact moment I don't really remember how it sort of happened but I remember watching a it's like a Premier League goals goal rush some some video one morning and I think it was Lee Hendry scored an absolute worldie against Everton and from that moment I was like Lee Hendry's my guy Aston Villa is my team and um, my auntie, well, my great aunt, she'd sort of fly back between Australia, Australia and London and she brought back a, an Aston Villa jersey, my first ever one. I think it was the 2003-04 season. I think it was Hummel's first jersey. Now I'm getting really, really, really niche. But um, <laughs> I think it was when Hummel first, yeah, first started sponsoring Villa and I got it. And I remember writing Hendry number seven on the back in permanent marker. Um, Mum wasn't very happy about that, but to <laughs> me it was like that was – the perfect addition to the jersey. So yeah, ever since Lee Hendry scored that goal, it's been um Villa all the way. Uh it's mm. been a few rough seasons, especially under Paul Lambert and that sort of era. Yeah. Um, compounded by the fact I have to get up at, you know, the crack of dawn to watch games or stay up till midnight. Um so it was a tough few tough little while there supporting Villa. But um now it's it's 
it's looking a lot brighter and I'm, yeah, you sort of feel a bit prouder to say that you're a Villa fan over here. Oh yeah. I, I, I love the stories. I've chatted to a few um, Lions groups abroad, you know, uh, people in Canada and the U S and how they ended up supporting Villa. And I always love hearing the stories of how it happens. And um, a lot of it is actually through FIFA, which is quite surprising to me, but uh, <laughs> yeah, that, that's how a lot of people did it. But that's amazing to hear that you saw one goal and that was it. And the, the fact that you've managed to commit to it and stick to it as well during the absolute horror show that was the last sort of 10, 15 years or so. So uh, that's absolutely amazing to hear that. And um you know, uh, I mean, basically, what have you made of this season? I mean, I mean, what, what do you make of Unai Emery? It's incredible, isn't it? It's a it's a dream season. I think you know the fact that we were, you know, within the like the title race. Obviously, I think we were seen as the not or not really seen as serious title contenders. Um, yeah, you looked at like the likes of Man City, even though they're a little bit far back, that they were always going to come back at some stage. Mm. But I think the fact that we were even getting mentions in that, even if it's a passing mention, was just something that I don't think anyone dreamed about, you know, five years ago when we are in the championship. Um, so to consider how quickly it's turned around and that we're, you know, we're dreaming. It almost seems as if amongst some fans that not finishing the top four this season is a failure when, mm. you know, they're, they're, that's just remarkable in itself that we're daring to dream that much, but it's just been incredible. You know, you look at the, what was, what we were capable of when we beat Man City that game one nil when it really should have been more um yeah at the minute is a little bit of a blip but i think i think it's we're almost just level, leveling out a little bit i think we're always due for a rough patch at some stage nothing good can last forever um but it's a massive second half of the season i think even if we even if we dip into the europa league unfortunately which yeah i think for me would be unfortunate yeah. considering how well we've done this far um it still represents a massive season and an improvement on last season, which I think is all anyone can at, at the end of the day can really ask for. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, you know, as as, as an Aussie uh, Villa fan, how does it feel to see Joe Gauchi joining uh, joining the Villa? It's massive. It's been a while since we've had a Villa at, uh, an Aussie at the Villa. I mean, the last <laughs> one was, gosh, I think it might have been Chris Hurd. Um, oh, yeah, I think it might have been the last. And Brett Holman. Brett Holman, yeah. Yeah. Um, before then, it was Shane Lowry for a little bit. Mm. Um, so we've had a bit of a lean patch um, without Aussies at Villa, but even before that, you look at Mark Bosnich. Um, so I think if we look at the last Aussie goalkeeper to play for Villa, um, things could go great um, before it turns out. <laughs> but um, if, I think it's just great that I think for the for a lot of Aussie football fans, um, having just having a presence in the Premier League is is massive. Mm. Um, so to have Gauchi there, even if he might not be playing as much as uh, Villa fans would like and Aussie football fans would like, it's just massive. And it's a it's a big moment for Aussie football to have someone back in the Premier League. Absolutely. Um, Alex, it's been absolutely amazing to chat to you, genuinely. I'll have to have you back on the podcast very soon because that was really <laughs> informative and I've so much more I want to ask you about your Aston Villa support and all that as well. But, um, you know, for those who uh, won't be aware, where can we find you and uh, Fox Football Podcast online? Uh, yeah, so you can catch me on Twitter, or I guess X, as we have to call it now. Um, <laughs> Alex H. Conrad. I'm always writing articles about football and a bunch of other sports for Fox Sports Australia on foxsports.com.au and, of course, the Fox Football Podcast, um, which has unfortunately taken a little bit of a, a hiatus, but we're always looking to bring it back. So um, that's where you can catch me and look forward to, to everyone engaging with some articles and trying to squeeze a bit more Villa content in on Fox Sports. Brilliant. Thanks for coming on, Alex, and uh, up the villa. Up the villa. Thank you very much.